Welcome to Origins 2020 Christmas Special. My name is Colin Peckham and I have the privilege to serve as Origins Ministry Leader. If you're new to our channel or live events, you can find out more about us at the website, which is on the screen. Tonight, we're bringing together the Origin family of musicians and singers and some of our friends from all over the world. From Santa Barbara in California to Memphis and Nashville in Tennessee, Springfield in Minnesota to Glasgow and Edinburgh in Scotland and all the way down to Cape Town in South Africa. We've recorded on three continents, on every kind of device imaginable, from webcams and camcorders to phones to professional cameras in homes, churches, halls, and studios over the last month. And except for husband and wife team Drakeford, no two people you'll see on the screen were ever in the same room at the same time. And all to share with you a story, the greatest story ever told. This time of the year is magical. And whether you're in a winter wonderland or enjoying your white Christmas on a beach in the south, the story of Christmas pervades every aspect of the season. It's a story of mystery, of a grand plan involving people from every level of society and made all the more amazing because it's true. Our story tonight is the story of two trees. They didn't grow in the same forest or even at the same time. The first had long died by the time the second was planted, but they're inextricably linked in history. It's an odd celebration, Christmas. We celebrate not the happy ending, but a moment of joy in the middle of the story. I suppose it's the beginning of the end. But let me back up just a little and explain the beginning, because without it, this story makes no sense at all. We begin long ago when the planet was young, God had just created the earth, and when he'd done putting the stars in the sky and making the oceans and the Alps, he planted a garden and put two people in there. Everything was perfect, literally not a leaf out of place. There was only one rule, and it concerned a tree. This particular tree was right in the middle of the garden, and God was very clear, this tree was out of bounds. You weren't allowed to touch it. After all, there were hundreds of other trees laden with the most delicious fruit, you don't need this tree, Adam. He called it the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What value has love without allowing the choice not to love? What is obedience without the option to disobey? Of course they ate the fruit. I don't know about the artist's impressions you see of Eve demurely nibbling at an apple. I bet they gorged themselves with it. I mean, you've eaten one, you may as well eat the whole tree. Lie on the ground so full you can't walk. And just like that, the world changed forever. Who told you you were naked? God thundered when he found them hiding from him in the bushes, like you can hide from God. We don't know what happened to the tree. The garden fell into disrepair after God threw the people out into the dark. I guess the tree grew old and eventually died like everything did now. And things suddenly became very hard. Evil and death were upon us. The beginning of our story is not very Christmassy. The second tree? It would be thousands of years before that tree would be planted, grow and be cut down by servants of an empire that had arisen to rule the known world. It would be cut down to kill a king in the darkest moment in history. But for now, there remained a gleam of hope. God had said, let us create man. This was going to take a team effort and the story was just beginning. All was not yet lost.
and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appears be joys rejoice Emmanuel shall come to thee O Israel O come thou rod of Jesse free thy Satan's tyranny from depths of hell thy people save and give them victory o'er the grave rejoice rejoice Shall come to thee, O Israel. Come, desire of nations, bind all people in one heart and mind. Bid envy, strife, and quarrel cease. Fill all the world with. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. The stirrings of the future coursed through his veins. He saw all of it laid out clear. Isaiah smoothed out the parchment and lifted a pen and wrote, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them, upon them a light has shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord will perform this. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, from his roots a branch that will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, of counsel and might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He, he will not judge by what he sees with his eyes, 
or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness, he will judge the needy. With justice, he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will lie with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf will lie down with the lion and the yearling together. And a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. The young will lie down together. The lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant, the infant will play near the cobra's den. And the young child would put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of God as the waters cover the sea. Lift up our eyes Follow the star Guided by the light It shows us where you are We've come to to bow down, give you all we have. We've come to worship, we've come to bow down, give you all we to worship, we've come to bow down.
was born. The houses of Nazareth are built on the steep sides of a hill that faces east. It gets the morning light. The weather's kind because of the hill's protection and the rainfall is generous. There's only one spring of water for the entire village, so Nazareth has stayed small. Those who live there know each other very well. Six months after her betrothal to Joseph, in the spring of the year, when the rains had passed and the ground was green, Mary was on her own when, out of thin air, a man stood shining before her. Greetings, favoured one. The Lord is with you. She knew that greeting. Did the stories flood her senses from the archives of her people? That greeting was given to Moses before the plagues, to Joshua when he was asked to lead three million people to Gideon on the edge of a terrifying battle. The Lord is with you? What sort of greeting is that to give to a girl? She was deeply troubled and he saw it. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. The angel could hold his message no longer. He had been chosen to carry it from God's golden home. You will conceive and give birth to a son. You are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked. For I've, for I've never been with a man. The angel answered, The power of the Most High will overshadow you. The Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. The Lord will be with you. The Lord will be with you. I am the Lord's servant, she said. Let this happen to me according to your word. And the angel left her.
I've gathered there Cherubim and seraphim throng the air But his mother only in her maiden bliss Worship the Sons of earth, born 
We've seen occupations. Poland, France, Ukraine, Syria. In the 23rd year of the reign of Caesar Augustus, the decree was given that all people throughout the empire should be documented. They were to travel to their ancestral villages and be listed there. So Joseph, the son of Jacob, obeying the imperial decree, left Nazareth in Galilee with Mary, his wife, who carried within her the holy child. They set out for Bethlehem, the city of David. The enrollment had begun before the couple arrived. Bethlehem's regular activities had been drowned in this great flood of Jews. Children of David filled the villages and the hillsides. Roman officials manned their booths as lines of people stood from morning until dusk. What a time for a birth in that occupied town, far from everything familiar. Mary felt the beginning and gasped. Her labor took place in a disheveled stall. Pain brought the sacred child onto the straw. She gathered him up and wiped him clean. Jesus, she whispered. Jesus, here you are. Farm animals pressed in and then shepherds and kings. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Oh, come let us adore him, Christ. 
hearts adore Oh, come let us adore Oh, come let us adore Him, Christ the Lord For you virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. born to you this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. He said to them, Why do you seek me? Do you not know that I must be about my father? Put these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Lazarus, come forth, and he who had died came out bowed hand and foot. Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man led with him to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him. Christ the Lord. Two thousand years gone by, still I hear that baby cry, crying for a world that's lost her way. Come down like one of us, untouched by sinfulness, he lost all his dignity. Love And every 
tear that falls touches the human soul. Oh, can you feel the healing rain of oh, love that forgives and it sets me free? So I Ik zelfs 
Well, I wonder if you're counting down the days, not to Christmas, but to New Year. I guess most of us have had enough of this year and we're kind of hoping that next year is going to be a little bit better. Did you hear the story about the man who went to the opticians and the optician said, what can you see? And he says, well, I can see pubs that are closed. I can people, see people sitting at home on their own. I can see high streets that are deserted. And the optician says, that's great. You've got 2020 vision. Well, I guess that has been our experience, hasn't it, over this year? I don't know whether you bought a diary at the start of 2020, but for most of us, our diaries have been redundant. I saw this one in a shop being sold off earlier this year, and I'm not sure 2020 was anyone's best year ever. I was also in a shop uh, looking at some travel books recently, and I noticed this one uh, from Lonely Planets, which interestingly hadn't sold many copies. A friend sent me a link to this series of Lonely Planet books that should have been produced this year. Um, perhaps they were some of the places that we would have been visiting more frequently. But at the end of the day, we hope, don't we, that next year is going to be better. We hope that 2021 will be better than 2020. And certainly news of successful vaccines have given certain weight to that hope that we have for the new year. The health secretary here in the UK has talked about injecting hope into people's arms. And yet what I want to say is this, Christmas is not about a time of injecting hope, but at Christmas we remember that hope was born and a far greater hope for our world than the very best vaccine that we could hope for. The words that we had read to us earlier on were written 2,700 years ago, written down by the prophet Isaiah. And in those words, we read about gloom and darkness and distress and oppression. And we might read those words and think that they were written in 2020 because they sum up for many of us our experience of life this year. Life has been difficult. Life has felt dark. And Christmas is a strange time, isn't it, this year? Because we think to ourselves, how can we celebrate Christmas when the world is so dark? Do we just have to pretend that the darkness isn't there? Do we just have to pretend that everything is okay for the next few weeks before we go back to reality? But actually, what Isaiah tells us is that Christmas is not about denying the darkness. But at Christmas, we can have hope in the face of the darkness. Christmas offers us hope in our bleak situations. Uh, did you notice how Isaiah talks about in the place of darkness, light, in the place of gloom, joy, in the place of distress, rejoicing, in the place of oppression, freedom. Isaiah talks about this incredible hope that we can have in the midst of a dark world, but how does that hope come about? What is it that's going to bring that kind of hope to our world? Well, notice what he says. He says, this hope is born. He says, a child is going to be born. Now, we've got some friends who are expecting a baby in the next few weeks, and they've got great expectations and hopes for what that child will grow up to become. But I guess this is pretty big, isn't it? The hopes that a child could bring about light in the darkness joy where there is distress. The, the hope that Isaiah is placing upon the shoulders of this, this child is, is pretty incredible. So how? How can we have this kind of hope in the face of, of darkness? Well, because of who this child is. Did you notice what the child was going to be called? He was going to be called Mighty God. This was not just another child being born. But this was God himself being born into human history, space and time. And the fullness of God was going to be revealed to us through this child. Isaiah goes on and says, this child will show us how God is our everlasting father. How he can be our wonderful counsellor. How can he, he be our prince of peace? And he talks about how the government is going to rest upon this child's shoulders. I don't know in my lifetime whether there's ever been a year where people have been more frustrated with their governments. We've been frustrated by what they have done. We've been frustrated by what they haven't done. 
And yet what a wonderful hope that Isaiah speaks of, that one day there is going to be someone who is going to have the government on his shoulders and he will rule with justice. He will do what is right and he won't be powerless to bring that about, but he will be able to rule in a way that is right. And then 700 years after Isaiah speaks this, these words, this hope becomes a reality. This hope was born, but born not into riches, but into poverty, not into a palace, but into a stable, not into the light of day, but into the darkness of night, because God comes to defeat the darkness by becoming part of the darkness, stepping into the darkness. And then as we read through the story of his life, we eventually get to the crescendo of it as on the cross, Jesus would take the darkness of our world the darkness of our lives upon himself. He steps into the darkness to bring hope that light can one day shine. I was speaking to someone recently who had volunteered for one of the coronavirus vaccine trials. I was thinking of how grateful I am to people like her who volunteered for this trial, not knowing what might happen when they were injected with this new vaccine. But then it made me think, of the God who did know what was going to happen when he stepped into this broken and dark world. He knew that it would cost him ultimately his life as he would go to a cross and take darkness and death for us so that we might have hope and so that we might have life. But you might say, if that happened 2000 years ago, why is the world still so dark? Why hasn't it made the world better? Well, actually, one of the favourite days that I have in the year is just before Christmas. It's the winter solstice. I, in fact, often go camping and watch the sunrise on that day. Now, if anyone knows me, they might find that slightly strange because I love the summer. I love the sun. I love everything about being outdoors. And winter, for me, I, I don't really enjoy it. But I love that day. Why? Because on that shortest day of the year, I know that from that day onwards, the days are going to get longer. I know that from that day onwards, I can look forward to the fact that spring is coming. And although it may feel dark for several weeks yet, although it may even feel colder, I know that summer is coming. And that day in the bleakness of winter fills me with hope. And that is a wonderful picture of the coming of Christ in Jesus we have the hope that a corner in history has been turned. We know that an eternal summer is coming. We know that light has defeated the darkness. And we can look forward to that. Every year, one of the Christmas traditions in the UK is to look forward to the release of the John Lewis Christmas advert. And I have to say, I don't think they've ever bettered this particular Christmas movie uh, from a few years ago. Do you remember the one? This child is looking forward to Christmas. He's counting down the days. Time cannot pass quickly enough. He's desperate for Christmas. And we all think it's because he's desperate to get his presents. But on Christmas Day, we see him sneaking into his parents' bedroom to give his Christmas presents to them. Now, I've always watched that with a slight smile on my face, wondering how a boy that age can afford a present that big from John Lewis. But that's not exactly the point. The point is this. We all think he wants to get something, but actually he wants to give something. Maybe when you think of God, if you think of God at all, you think of a God who wants to get from us our obedience, our good behaviour. But actually Christmas speaks of a God who hasn't come to get, but has come to give. A son is given and he's given for you and he's given for me. He wants to give us life and light and hope. Not just at Christmas, not just for 2021, but a hope that will last forever. And my question is, have you ever received that hope? Have you ever received that gift? Do you know the reality of that in your life? Why not, if you haven't yet, unwrap the greatest gift this Christmas time? and discover that hope for yourself.
I wonder if you've ever received this gift for yourself, the gift of the light and the life and the hope that can be born in your life through Jesus. Well, if you haven't, I'd love to give you the opportunity to do that. I'd love to invite you to pray with me in just a moment. But maybe you've got questions. Maybe you're not sure about whether you'd like to do that yet. We'd love to be in touch with you and we'll give you some information about how you can get in contact and we can continue this conversation. Maybe you're sceptical, maybe you're not even sure whether these claims are true. Maybe you think they're too good to be true. Well, why not go back to the historical sources and check this out for yourself? Why not take one of those gospel accounts of the life of Jesus and read them through from cover to cover? Maybe you've never done that before. At least do that this Christmas time and ask yourself the question, if this was true, what difference would it make to our world and what difference could it make to your life? But maybe you'd like to respond and receive that gift for yourself. Well, why not echo this prayer in your heart 
this Christmas. Heavenly Father, thank you that Jesus was born to bring light where there is darkness, to bring hope where there is despair. Lord Jesus, please come into my life and bring light in my darkness, bring hope in my despair. Thank you that you took the darkness that I deserve so that I don't have to. And I pray that you would help me now to live in the light of the hope that you give, not just this Christmas, but throughout my life and into eternity. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you very much for being part of this event. And I want to wish you a very happy Christmas.
Thank you so much for tuning in to this year's Christmas special from Origin. Really hope you enjoyed the event. And if you have any questions about anything that you've seen or heard, please drop us an email. Email address is on the screen or there'll be a link down below. If you would like to support us, help us pay for all the expenses of an event like this, we would invite that very much. You can make a donation at this address or there'll be a link also in the description below. Also, please tell your friends this video will remain here and they can come and see it anytime. In South Africa, sometimes we celebrate Christmas in July. They could watch it in July. Anyway, whenever you celebrate Christmas, we hope you have a great one and look forward to a wonderful new year. 
Good night and God bless.